I gotta level with you. Just between you and me, this autism shit is hard. Fumbling through the diagnosis and figuring out what it all means is setting my teeth on edge. It is extremely uncomfortable mining my past and then trying to fit all the pieces together. Not to mention all the researching and therapy and telling my people. Yoy. I need a break from it all, like a seventh inning stretch. There's still more work to do, yes, but your girl needs a breather. And I think I know how to get the respite I'm so desperate for. I need to go on a trip. I think a little adventure will do me good. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. Yes, Lauren, right you are. Traveling is critical to your well-being. Surely you remember Dr. Autismo. He's our esteemed colleague from a previous episode. Obviously, Dr. Autismo is not a real doctor. He's an actor. But he does know all the things. So, doctor, according to science, why is travel good for us? Well, Lauren... Travel, particularly abroad, has many benefits. For one, travel keeps you healthy. People who take regular vacations are less likely to have heart attacks than people who do not. And that's a good thing, because heart attacks are not very much fun. I know I've had 17. (laughs) Plus, travel enhances mindfulness and helps reduce stress and anxiety. Unless you lose your bag or your plane crashes, then you are going to be very stressed indeed. Dr. Artismo, all of that sounds amazing. Any other benefits from taking a trip? Yes! There's one more positive from traveling that comes even before you've left terra firma. Just planning a trip boosts your mood and enhances your general satisfaction with life. So even if your upstairs neighbor is trying on her new wooden clogs while yodeling at a 2 p.m. on a work day, you'll barely notice it because your mood will be so good. Claim not evaluated or backed by science in any way. So basically, Dr. Autismo, traveling is a really important part of our general wellness, according to science. That's what I'm getting here. Yes, Lauren, you are picking up what I am putting down. I'm also laying a ton pretty sick. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get out of here. All this autism reckoning I'm doing is hard. I want to see new things. I want to meet new people. I want to leave on a jet plane right this minute. But I can't just journey to Cape Town or Tokyo or Daytona Beach. I'd still be in my own dumb brain. I need to go as far away from reality as I can possibly go. I need to go to a little place called Autism Burgtown Daleborough. Or, as it's more affectionately known, Autism Pleasantville. You're listening to the loudest girl in the world, who is not the kid sitting next to you on the airplane. It's me, Lauren Ober. The Loudest Girl in the World is a show about finding yourself broken in a pretty dark place and emerging from that place a mostly glued back together person. This week, we're taking a little departure. Get it, departure? From all the big feelings and the bonus sized tears and the agita of moving through a world where you never feel quite like everybody else. And Autism Pleasantville is the perfect destination. Well, my perfect destination. Because, as we can all recite from heart at this point, if you know one autistic person, you know one autistic person. In my neurodivergent brigadoon, there are no loud sirens, no awkward silences, and everyone gets free therapy. Come on, our flight leaves soon. But not before this ad break. Goofballs, our flight leaves soon. Welcome passengers to Air Autismia, flight F84.0 nonstop to Autism Burgtown, Delboro. I'm uh, Captain Autismo. I'll be getting you there today. A couple of quick things before we take off. This is a no 
headphone bleed flight, meaning if you have headphones on and there is music bleeding out of them, we're going to have to ask you to turn the volume down. This is for the comfort of your seatmates and for the general health of your ears. At Air Autismia, we care. Second bit of business, this is also a uh, no reclining flight, so that little recline button on your armrest, yeah, that one. Don't push it. I know it's tempting, but I promise you that extra two inches of recline will not make the difference between comfortable and not comfortable. But while you're pretending like you're in your grandpa's lazy boy, that person behind you is trying to pull their teeth out of their knees. And anyway, our seats on Air Autismia are so comfortable. Why the fuck would you need to recline? Uh, last little announcement before we take off. If you are Lauren Ober, you absolutely do not have to sit near a window. We know you have massive panic attacks if uh, you sit in a window seat, so... So Lauren, pick an exit row aisle seat on us. We got you, girl. Okay, that's it from me. Sit back, relax, and enjoy our quick trip to Autism Town Del Burro. And if there's anything we can do to make your flight more pleasant with us, please don't hesitate to let us know, and uh... In what seemed like a flash, we arrived in Autism Burgtown Dalboro, aka Autism Pleasantville, and headed to Customs. Hi, I'm Agent Autismo. Where are you coming from today? This guy sounds familiar. Um, I just flew in from uh, Neurotypical Landia Vale. I, you might know that that flight that came in just now. Right. And what is the purpose of your visit? Uh, well, uh, appreciate you asking. I'm I'm coming for some R and R. Rest and relaxation. Uh, also, there's this conference that I'm going to. I'm just to. playing with you. I know why you're here. I can tell by the way oh. you're rocking back and forth. Oh. And I can see Obvious? a janky blanky peeking out of your bag. Also, uh -oh. you're talking really oh, loudly, which sorry. is totally okay. Uh, anyway, no need for a visa. You're among friends. Ooh. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. This is easily the smoothest travel experience I have ever had. No anxiously waiting online, no meltdowns at the gate, and no stressful encounters with fellow passengers taking up valuable overhead bin space with near-empty backpacks. Plus, so much iced tea in every terminal. I feel like this whole experience was designed for me. Before I got on with the business of exploring this atypical Xanadu, I had to make a food stop. Autism Pleasantville is known for its lunch game which is wild because I love lunch. All the food is vegetarian and nothing is gross. Also in Autism Pleasantville, capers are illegal and eating weeds like dandelion greens is not a thing. Oh, there's my sweet pumpkin muffin. We're so glad to have you dine with us today, dearie. Here's your bottomless iced tea. Oh, chef, you always know how to make me feel so welcome here. So good to see you. Oh, you too, dear. You look gorgeous. Oh, sweet, have I got a treat for you. We have beautiful tomatoes, and none of them have those gross white centers that you hate. Also, none of our tomatoes have weird stem butts. In fact, none of our produce has butts. Miraculous, no? Totally miraculous. Also, I want to make sure you know this is an arugula-free restaurant, dear. We would never try to sneak any of that nasty garbage leaf into your food. You have Chef Autismo's word, dear. Not a single one of those ruddy leaves. I've hidden them all away, dear. Chef Autismo, you're always taking care of me. It's so nice. Um, before I order, though, I wanted to make sure about dessert. No nuts of any kind, right? I mean, yes, I like peanuts and pistachios, but, you know, not in things. My dear, of course, not to worry. We were prepared for this even before we knew you were coming. There is not a walnut or a hazelnut or a macadamia nut to be found in any of our dishes, especially not to the dessert, just smooth, creamy, delicious pâtés and ice creams and all those weird old British puddings. You're nuts if you think otherwise, dear. Totally bonkers. Off your rocker. Chef Autismo, I totally get it. Thank you. Okay, enough for me. Back to the scullery I go. Let's get you fed first, though, love. My meal at Cafe Autismus was amazing. It had everything I love. Fake meats, pickled things, crunchy things, jams and sauces without chunks, 
every kind of delicious bread, mayonnaise, and of course, nut-free, fruit-free treats with nothing that I hate. I didn't have to gag anything down just to be polite or embarrassingly pick through my food to find the things I can't even consider putting in my mouth. It was like the whole restaurant was built just for me and my needs. After lunch, I headed to my hotel. All the rooms in the hotel are built like bank vaults with windows, meaning I can't hear the other guests caterwauling, which generally isn't a problem in the first place because in Autism Pleasantville, no one ever caterwauls. In my hotel room, the pillows are all firm and the water pressure is excellent. Also, bar soap only in the shower. None of this millennial body wash nonsense. And one of the most important features of the room, no human hairs anywhere that are not mine. Not in the tub, not on the sink, not in the bed or on the desk. No evidence that another person has shed anywhere in the vicinity. What? I don't like other people's hair. Sue me. The lobby of my hotel is full of lovely people. But more importantly, it's a wash in puppers. Because since this is my fantasy, my hotel is dog friendly. So many cuties to pet. Oh, who's a cute guy? You're so cute. Oh, who's fuzzy? Who's a fuzzy guy? Oh, wait. But I couldn't tarry in the lobby. I was here on business. I had a conference to attend. Now, I know I've mentioned before that professional conferences are my social anxiety nightmare. Too many people, too many variables, too many opportunities to say dumb shit. I have actually broken out in hives before because of conference dread. But here's a little secret. I actually kind of love conferences, except that one conference where I got dumped. That sucked. At conferences, I get to see my friends who live elsewhere, and I get to learn stuff, and sometimes I get to give talks and make jokes. But all the times when I'm not chatting to friends or learning stuff, I generally feel like I'm going to barf. This conference is a little different. It's for middle-aged perimenopausal gingers who love dogs, ride bikes, and have weird interests, like cobblery or online makeup tutorials or the Netflix show Love is Blind. I mean, just to name a few randoms. So the likelihood that I'm going to pass out from anxiety is low. However, the chance that I'm going to be socially awkward is still actually pretty high. Let's do this. Or maybe let's just see how long I can make it before I have to bow out. Hey, I'm Louise. Hey, Louise. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Lauren. So, uh, what's your favorite holiday? Oh, uh, actually, I don't really like holidays very much. I feel like holidays are really stressful. It's like mandatory fun. Oh boy. Oh Lord, it's starting. Yeah, so I just like, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd prefer to just hang out with my friends. Uh, I mean, I guess if I had to pick one, I don't know, like... Well, Thanksgiving, but then it's problematic. Why is it problematic? It's just weird to celebrate, you know, the annihilation of a people also by eating turkey. I don't know. It just feels weird to me. Oh, boy. It's just so stressful to talk to people at these things. What about the 4th of July? Uh, you know, I mean, I guess fireworks are okay. I like fireworks sometimes, but they're very loud. And I don't know. I mean, there's kind of kind of like a you seen one, you seen them all kind of thing with fireworks. I like them because there's hot dogs. Oh, right. I don't know. I'm a vegetarian. Oh, my God. I had a feeling. Why are you a vegetarian? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, I'm a vegetarian because I just, I feel like I, I don't really want to eat living things or things that had a face oh or a mom. I feel like this would happen. This is called conference mouth, and it's a very oh common God. ailment of mine. I tend to just stick with vegetables and... Uh, so it's time to hit the eject button on this conversation. Luckily, you can do that in Autism Pleasantville. That's because I have a handy dandy cloak of invisibility. It came in my conference swag bag, along with other doodads I can actually use, like an umbrella and some pencils and a packet of anti-diarrheal medicine. My cloak of invisibility allows me to wander the conference without being seen. But don't worry, I'm not being creepy when I wear it. It's just that I can enjoy the conviviality of the whole scene without having to worry about sticking my foot in it or running on at the mouth or ending a conversation in the most maximally awkward way. But sometimes at this conference, I actually do want to engage with people. But I feel like I need a buffer. Ooh. Cowabunga, man! 
look out! <laughs> hey, I'm Autismo Jr., the autism support human. Nice to meet you. Wow, nice to meet you too. That was quite an entrance. Thanks. What's up? What's your name? I'm Lauren. Oh, <laughs> nice to meet you, Lauren. Looking good. Oh, thank you, Autismo Jr. So nice of you. You, you look so familiar. Yeah, I get that a lot here. The amazing thing about Autism Pleasantville is that there's always someone to run interference for me in social situations. Today, it's Autismo Jr., my conference buddy, my icebreaker in human form. If I accidentally say anything uncouth, he immediately slips into the chat to save me. So, I think the thing that I really don't like about organized religion is that hey, it's kind of- I love a puppy, am I right? <laughs> I got one for each of us. I mean, they're just so squee, and their little noses, I die. Yeah, no, I, I love a puppy, obviously. You want one? Yes, please. Okay. Autismo Jr. knows when I need to tap out of a conversation, and he steers me away from people I don't want to talk to. He pays attention to when I'm maxed out and shuttles me away from scenes that are too loud and too hectic. Uh, yeah, no, I t totally, totally get that. Yep, no, cool. Oh, you don't say. Hey, Lauren, How about that? don't you have jury duty you have to get to now? You don't want to be late for that. Isn't he great? I mean, not sure why he sounds like the world's oldest Boy Scout, but he is charming, at least to me. So let me walk you through a few other great features of Autism Pleasantville. There are no sirens ever, the music at bars and restaurants is kept at a reasonable volume, and everyone walking past you on the sidewalk gives you a friendly hello. Also, music from the band Fish is outlawed, but that has nothing to do with autism. In Autism Pleasantville, when you go to a concert, all the tall people watch from the back and no one ever stands too close to you. And no stranger grazing. Also, free earplugs for all. And the cops in Autism Pleasantville, they're all basically like Officer Clemens from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. They're kind and helpful and they understand exactly what autism is and can recognize when someone is having a meltdown. Except unlike Officer Clements, they don't take foot baths with neighbors. So Autism Pleasantville is pretty amazing, right? At least for me. It has everything I want. Cute dogs and nice looking tomatoes and strangers at a safe distance. There's almost no conflict and there's very little friction. But the thing about Autism Pleasantville is that it's not a place you can live forever. For the same reason you can't live at a five-star resort. At some point, you begin to miss the noise and the grit and the struggle of real life. And every vacation has to end. Plus, I miss the neuro tips. So it's back to the real world for me. Captain Autismo, take me home. Uh, you got a kid? What? That's weird. I'm I'm not a kid. Sure thing, sport. No, not not that either. I love Autism Pleasantville because it's a world built just for me. By me. In that world, there is so much empathy and compassion. Quirks aren't pathologized or problematized. They're just part of who you are, no different than your hair color or your shoe size. In Pleasantville, everything seems manageable and nothing feels overwhelming. All the interactions are well lubricated and no one ever feels like a world-class bumbler because it's the friction that causes the problems, the disconnect between the world and me. When I feel triggered or misunderstood or unable to be heard, I get angry. It's not all that charming, but I can't help it. My emotions are literally boiling over and my brain is in hyperdrive. Over the years, I've learned to better contain the anger, to put it in a box and put that box high up on a shelf. I don't always succeed. And really, is that the healthiest option, compartmentalizing? Sometimes I take that anger out on myself in the form of shame or bad self-talk or very occasional self-harm. I mean, how many times has my inner voice said the words, I hate myself? Maybe like 10, 100,000 million? I tell myself it's my fault if I have conflict and that I really should work to smooth my own path. I remind myself that if I'm a paying passenger on the struggle bus, it's my own doing. But is it? 
Or is it merely that I'm an immigrant to the neurotypical world? I don't speak the language. I don't know the customs. I don't get the nuance. And the natives, they don't get me either. The autistic comedian Hannah Gadsby wrote about this recently in her book, 10 Steps to Nanette, a memoir situation. Here she is reading the audiobook. It's as if I am an alien who has been abandoned on Earth and left to muddle my way through life without a reason, a mission, or any memory of home. If you are a conspiracy theorist, this is where you might begin to wonder if I might perhaps be a lizard. I am not. Now piss off. Being an alien is isolating. We're social animals, even the most introverted among us. We need people around us who get us. And when you are neurodivergent, those people can be few and far between. In Janara Narenberg's book, Divergent Mind, she writes that the anxiety that many neurodivergent people feel is the result of how cognitive difference is treated in our society, which is to say that it's barely recognized or understood or respected. And obviously, she writes, that leads to feelings of insecurity, alienation, loneliness, and depression. Not exactly my preferred combo platter. But living in a make-believe land doesn't ameliorate all those bad feelings, at least not permanently. Autism Pleasantville is a great escape, a place to recharge when it all gets too much. But my mouthy dog doesn't live there, and my favorite four-year-old doesn't live there, and that one old guy at the end of my block who always shouts, Hey, man, when I walk past, he doesn't live there either. And I want to live where they live. I want to be around my people. And now more than ever, I want my people to also include other autistic folks. I have lots of lovely friends. Friends I've known for a million years and friends who are new but are definitely sticking around. I feel lucky to have them, all of them, because when I was a kid, I didn't have any. I didn't really make an actual friend until 10th grade. I was just too anxious. I remember one time when I was in eighth grade, a girl named Julianne, a ginger like me, asked me over to her house after school. I said yes and then immediately panicked. I had no idea what you did at someone else's house. Did you play video games, watch TV, do each other's hair and nails? But I swallowed my terror, I went to her house, and then I called my mom 30 minutes later to pick me up. I feigned some sort of mystery stomach ailment and called it a day. I was never invited back. The point is, when you have a hard time making friends, you cherish the ones you have. And I love my friends. I would do anything for them. I hope they know that. But apart from my girlfriend's 18-year-old son, none of my friends are autistic. And that was going to have to change. So in the next episode, Lauren makes an autistic friend. Though I'm probably not going to make any friends if I talk about myself in the third person. Ugh. You've been listening to The Loudest Girl in the World. It's hosted, written, and executive produced by me, Lauren Ober. Our senior producer is Ryder Alsop. Our associate producer is David Ja. Sophie Crane is our showrunner and senior editor. Jake Gorski is our mix engineer. Music composed by my autistic Kiwi pal, the inimitable Lady Hawk. Our artwork was created by the autistic illustrator Loretta Ipsum. The show was fact-checked by Andrea Lopez Cruzado, and our autism consultant is Sarah Caput. Our executive producers are Mia Lobel and Lital Molad. All the characters in this episode were voiced by the comedic Swiss army knife, Kevin Zack. Check him out online at kevin-zack.com. That's Zack, Z-A-K. This episode was conceived by Ryder Alsop. Thanks for listening, friend. 